After review by our intake prosecutors, we are charging 25 individuals with soliciting another to commit prostitution. Two Orlando women, 49-year-old Lanyan Ma and 27-year-old Yaping Ren, were arrested on charges related to prostitution. Police officers say many of the women involved in the case came to the U.S. from China on temporary visas and some reportedly had sex with 1,000 men. And they questioned all of these different men um, who had engaged in commercial sex not just with children, but with adults. Why did they take, um, you know, six months in some of these police department's cases, over a year in some, over a year of repeat visits to these women without rescuing them while they built up cases from the people who work there? They're essentially going in to collect evidence of prostitution. So the sheriff is brilliant because they think that's their boyfriend, their best friend, their only trusted person, and he will sell them 50 to 40 times a day. And that's why we were so successful and we have over 300 arrest warrants. Police enter into these massage businesses undercover, posing as customers, and they use that deceptive practice to either observe what's going on in the business, sometimes they will solicit sexual acts. Uh, soliciting sex. We target everyone that we can uh, on the internet, so we, we're constantly, we have a uh, couple detectives that do nothing but monitor social media. The most disturbing part of this story are the allegations that the sex workers were sexual slaves linked to a human trafficking ring. And so, these law enforcement operations are tra are starting to tap into the girl, your own little girls, your own little boys, any zip code across the country. Florida just happens to be really big with it happening. But one out of three little girls today are sexually abused. Hi, my name is Scarlett, and I'm a sex worker that works out of Oklahoma City. I've been a sex worker for nine years, and I have been doing massage, erotic massage, for the last four. Um, about two years ago, I was working with a girl who uh, was choosing to be there completely consensually and she was arrested by an undercover for solicitation of prostitution. And once they have visited a business several times, generally, um, they may return with uniformed officers. What happens to the women now, do you know? Well, as you and I speak, one of the women that's here, we're treating her as a victim. She's in protective custody. But we have a multi-prong approach, uh, no different than any other type of crime problem that we have. This is something that globally is a problem in Florida. These are vast criminal organizations. And the distinction between what police have told us have happened and what actually happened to the women who work in these businesses. And then again, it's it's enforcement. When, when we're out and about, we're doing our own reverses, our own things. We're not going to arrest our way into our safer neighborhood. We're not going to arrest our way out of the opioid problem, the mental health crisis. This is no different. And they run from law enforcement. We had 10 parlors in our city, and I spearheaded the closing of eight of those massage parlors in 2012 with the help of some community organizers. We were told by city administrators that we could not close these parlors down constitutionally. As a result, I personally was threatened. I was harassed by some of our local um, police officers. But the purpose of my call really is to urge other politicians in other cities do not be afraid. The number one thing that would have stopped them is the fear of arrest. First of all, let's focus on Robert Kraft. This case against him, will he face arrest? No. Billions of dollars made around the world off the buying and selling of human beings for prostitution, for labor. Yes, uh, there are labor slaves here in Florida too. We want your calls uh, in this spa, the, the one in South Florida, the ones in Central Florida, uh, being held basically as prisoners, not allowed to leave, forced to have sex with hundreds of men a week. What uh, is their status now? Right, so it's interesting. Uh, there are two women right. that we know of right now that are in the shelters. Uh, the majority of women who were working in these in these um, operations, they're in jail right now. They and and law enforcement is trying, they say, to to get them to cooperate. And, and yes, my name is Levi. When you get to the human trafficking. Call aspect, from Winter Haven. Right. They don't have. They have the first name again, please. Levi. They don't have. Levi. Food. I have some information about sex trafficking in the area. And what would that be, sir? 
I have first hand account sex trafficking that's happening to share with the public. Yes, sir. Thank you. They spoke to some of these men, um, or after a few weeks, rather, they spoke to some of these men who told them what was going on, and then they got warrants from a judge to install these cameras. So they installed the cameras themselves. They're not telling us right now exactly how they did that. Um, but the the reason, I, to, to get back to what Julie was saying previously, you know, it is a balancing act between how long you take and how you know that there are women who will slip through your fingers. I mean, we know, they know, at any given time, there's only gonna be a handful of women inside. They also know that the victims are moved around often, a couple days for some, maybe three weeks for others, but they want the strongest case that they can build. Uh, okay. So there, the level of evidence you need to get these so-called sneak and peek warrants is very high, and that's something that I think we want. And in a moment, what activists and policymakers are doing in Florida to combat this issue as we discuss human trafficking this Friday on the Florida Roundup with your tweets at Florida Roundup, and keep those calls coming at 305-995-1800. No, we'll have to speak to you another time, okay? Um, I'm sorry, what was your name? My name's Peter. Peter, well, I had some information that could have helped some people that are involved. Um, I don't trust the uh, those um, call, you know, the, the the phone the phone hotlines. Do you have somebody there that I could relay some information to? Well, let me get information from the contact information for you, Levi, and I'll pass that on to the news department. Okay. Is this a show that you guys do weekly? Yeah, but the topics, of course, vary from week to week. It looks like the agenda may be, at this point, to decriminalize prostitution after this Kraft case and everything mm -hmm. with Epstein. Epstein, um, you know, Kraft in the public's minds may pale in comparison, you know, to Epstein. Remember, Epstein was selling these children to the uh, mm -hmm. print, the so-called Prince of, of England, among others. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we can determine that, that he's not alone. This is okay. an international... Levi, I, I hate to interrupt you, but I've got a, a raft full of calls to handle here. So if I can get, if you would like somebody to contact you, I'm happy to take your contact information. Uh, actually, I think I'd like to contact you. Okay. Um, well, let me give you my uh, email address. I'll pass on whatever you have to say to anybody who would need to... Sure. Uh, would want to respond. So it's uh, then the first name Peter, P E T E R. Yes. And then the letter J. Yes. At W L R N dot O R G. And are you the one that makes the decision about what calls to take? No, that's the uh, producer and the host. And she makes those decisions on the spot? Yeah, uh huh. Is, what was her name? Well, they're different producers here and hosts. I mean, the hosts are Tom Hudson and Melissa Ross, and the uh, producer here is Alex Gonzalez. 
Is which one covered the last segment? With All three gun? have input into uh, make those decisions on the fly as to which calls they're going to take. All three of them made the decision at this yeah, time. Yeah, they just decide as to which call according to where how the conversation is going. And how many calls did you guys receive about? Do you know? Um, probably ten or fifteen. On this last show. And yes, how many sir. calls did you take? Two or three. So that's pretty typical. So I'm just wondering because if I'd like to participate or somebody I know would like to participate in your show in the future, uh, we're just trying to determine, you know, if um, if it's even feasible or if it's one of these. Because well, you know, the thing is, to Levi, I'll, I'll be Levi, I'll be honest with you, and that uh, any information or which may be accusatory in any way of a particular business or an incident or a crime or anything like that. We have to be very careful about putting anything like that on the air because there are liability issues, you know, without being able to confirm any information that someone would have. So I'm assuming that that's why, the, it, it, among other things, including the, just the general flow of the program, why your call may not have been taken. But that's an assumption on my part. I can't verify. And it's wrong. Entirely. Okay. Then you'll have to forgive us. Levi, I've got to move on. You've got my email address. You're more than welcome to contact me, okay? Thank you, sir. Do a little less assuming, Peter. Okay. Thank you, sir. Caller who's been patiently waiting on the call uh, on the phone. Uh, Juan calling us from Tampa. Good morning, Juan. Good morning, Juan. Hey, how's it going today? Good, good. How you doing today, man? All right. What, what was that, sir? They're getting ready to uh, decriminalize prostitution. They're going to use their craft case to set the price. And so, thank thank you for the call. Yeah. We appreciate and it. And you were discussing. The uh, Miami Herald, they were just about decades late in that report of that man. So we were talking about Jeffrey Epstein? I wasn't yes. discussing him. It wasn't called that Jeffrey Epstein. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And he was reported to have been selling the children to one of the English princes in the 1990s. Let's not pretend that he's alone. Well, we'll find out more. In the international ring. And although the, the case with Kraft uh, may pale to this one, uh, it will probably set the president to legalize prostitution. Oh, come on. <laughs> you think that's possible? <laughs> but um... It is impossible, Nola, but <laughs> uh, man all right. thinks that he can do it. Well, he thinks he can do a whole lot of things, but I appreciate you, Reggie. No. Thanks a lot, Reggie. Um, that's a little far-fetched. I, I don't think that's actually possible, but uh, we'll wait and see. Well, 13 years after billionaire pe pedophile Jeffrey Epstein was convicted of soliciting prostitution of a minor, the Miami Herald has now finally decided to uh, cover this story. Uh, Epstein, half man, half wolf, was running an international pedophile ring uh, with the likes of some of the most prestigious authoritative figures on the planet today. The article that was run in the Miami Herald has some problems. The attempt was made to cover up the police department, which for many years covered up for the crimes of the pedophilia community. Uh, the state attorney's office acted as many state attorney's office do by favoring the pedophile billionaire while it uh, imposed charges on the innocent folks of the community. The reason why these pedophiles have become billionaires is because they are connected within agencies such as the state attorney's office. Uh, this uh, pedophile uh, bil billionaire uh, had bragged about owning the police department as well as the state attorney's office and anyone uh, that knows how things work know that that's exactly what the case was. 
that the money was donated to these departments um, to support the associations and this is how if you choose to um, have sexual relations with children you're able to do so um, it will cost you know upwards of ten thousand a year uh, if you have hundreds of victims uh, and if you're you're pimping the children internationally uh, it may cost you more uh, but a lot of these police are looking for you know some a decent a decent retirement you know the the, the article is presenting uh, the pedophile as having connections that he's connected to the pedophile Trump or in the pedophile uh, Clinton no the pedophile Clinton and the pedophile Trump are connected to the pedophile Epstein this is the Illuminati